Throughout the 1990s in the NBA, only a handful of players sported visible tattoos. Today, tattoos have been so widely accepted in the league that their bodies have become a canvas of personal artwork to showcase who they are. It's no longer enough to just have a unique tattoo though. You've got to have the best. And to get the best, many players are turning to artist Steve Weeb. I think with the NBA, their uniforms show so much skin that you're basically an artist on a stage, like a musician where you could have a certain look that shows a little bit of your style. One player might come in to practice with a brand new whip. Well, the guy next to him is making just as much money and can go buy that same car. But if he comes in with a tattoo from Steve and the next guy can't get one, it's a little bit of bragging rights there. Josh Smith was the first guy to fly me out and kind of open my eyes to that scene. Not long after, Kevin Durant actually hit me up. He said, I've been looking to get a Tupac tattoo. Once you get a couple pieces within the league and in the dressing rooms, other players start to take notice. And now they're looking down at their tattoos like, damn. The tattoo world is like the fashion world now. It's like the barber, you know, it's like, you know, what you put in your body is important. When I was younger, I was following players more just for their game. AI was the only person that I was probably wondering like what he was doing more off the court in his style. And the tattoos were just totally different. I think Iverson changed everything. When he was started to get tattoos and it wasn't one, two, it was maybe like three, four, five, six. I think Iverson opened it up for the players in the 2000s to get tattooed and not have it be a thing. The first tattoos I ever saw in the NBA were definitely Dennis Rodman. At that time, nobody had tattoos, so like, it was his way of expressing himself. Coming from Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, where these guys were so clean cut. The 90s was just a different style of tattooing. You had initials, your area code, smoke, flames. Marcus Camby, I remember, had a big kanji symbol on his shoulder, and then Damon Stoudemire had the Mighty Mouse, and I just thought that was the dopest thing ever. Guys were just trying to get tatted, like fill up space. Nothing was too detailed or intricate. It was more so like just repping your hood or repping your family. Whereas now I feel like people can come up with any idea and the artist can portray that for them. One thing that helped separate me from others was being able to take their idea and give them a better option. Obviously working on high profile clients, I know that tattoo is going to be seen. There's a lot of critics out there, but at the end of the day, like the only person I'm worried about making happy is my clients. You know, doing John Wall, his mom on his neck was like a big deal for me. I know that's his best friend in life. So, you know, when he lost her and he told me he wanted to get her tattooed, I just thought this has to be perfect. When John looks in the mirror, he has to see his mom. A lot of guys get tattooed in points of their life where they might've just had a big accomplishment or they might've just gone through something tragic. So for me to be there, during those times for these people is like pretty special to me.